GW Healthcare World on the World Heart Day. Uh, our guest today is a legend in the cardiothoracic surgery, uh, Dr. B. Bhaskar Rao, who is one of the very few cardiothoracic surgeons in the country who has performed over 30,000 surgeries in his career spanning 28 years. He is currently the managing director and the CEO of Kim's Hospitals. Welcome, Dr. Rao, to BW Healthcare World. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rao, uh, the theme for this year on the World Heart Day is Use Heart, No Heart. How does this theme resonate with you? Basically, the theme looks like uh, that use heart, that means every day we are using the heart, using the, in the sense heart is functioning, that's why we are living. The entire body is supplied by the heart pumping. When you are, when that is an important uh, aspect of the body, where the entire blood supply is being given to the body by functioning of the heart, that is the heart you know. Then know the heart once, if it is such an important job, it is functioning, we should also respect the heart and we should also know our heart. That means unless we don't know the heart, how it is functioning, what it requires, what, how we are abusing our heart. And unless you don't know that, then you cannot able to protect your heart very well. So the entire theme is very good. So unless we protect the heart, we can't use the heart. So the day when we are not using the heart, then we are almost nothing in the society. Not only at the end of the life, but even if the heart is not functioning very well, what will happen? You will be circumventing a lot of uh, um, unhappy moments. That is uh, when not able to attend for the uh, functions and not able to do a good exercise or not able to do anything. So that's why we need to, we should know about our heart and protect it and respect it and see what we can do for that. Brilliant. I think it's a very important aspect that you've touched upon that heart is a very uh, important organ in our body. And this organ, if you want to really have it work well, you have to understand what it does. And that is when you'll be able to take care of it. Brilliant. Uh, Dr. Rao, I'm sure when you started your practice to today, a lot has changed. Uh, maybe you can walk us through the advancements over these years? Yes, uh, actually I joined the cardiothoracic surgery in 1984 in CMC Vellore in June. By 2024 June, I have been uh, nearly finishing 40 years of my journey in uh, cardiothoracic surgery, whether it may be during my education, maybe a fellowships, maybe a consultant, then as a uh, entrepreneur and all. So when we do in 18, 1984, at that time, the heart surgery in India was performing very few places, hardly 10, 15 places they were doing. Out of 10, 15, only four or five places are doing a reasonably good work. At that time, still most of the patients used to go to overseas to get the bypass surgery done. From there, the India has grown up now Maybe we are doing a, a million surgeries every year. So maybe around two to three lakh surgeries, not million. Uh, we have come up to that level. During that time when we were doing heart surgery, it's a big feast because it's a big teamwork. One is a good anesthetist should have and also a good surgeon and a good scrub nurse, that is a, a sister who can able to understand the entire anatomy and physiology and the instruments that we need. And also we need a most important is the post-operative care. Post-operative, the intensivist, and as well as the, uh, the nursing staff also. And also in the intraoperatively, we require a good perfusionist, which able to, perfusionist means when we do the heart surgery, whether it is a open heart or a bypass surgery, we need to stop the heart entirely. So when we want to stop the heart, we need to see that the entire body should get circulation. 
so what we got a heart lung mission heart lung mission so that we will keep all the cannulas within the body and that bypass to the blood to that heart lung mission which is an oxygenator is there and will when it gets oxygenated that means we take out the deoxygenated blood which usually the heart and lung performing in a human body what will happen the entire blood is come to the heart it pumps it to the lung from lung it will get purified and come to the uh, heart of the left side of the heart will pump the entire body so the same job has to done by someone when we stop the heart so that is called the heart and lung machine so it that to runs that one is the perfusionist so it's a very important a team work and lot of uh, dedication commitment every one of them should able to see later on what happened there is a advancement has come a beating heart beating heart means where previously as i mentioned the heart has to stop totally now there is no need to stop the heart heart will be still beating we will able to use the some sort of a devices where it will fix the po portion of the heart not to beat so that where we can able to perform the anastomosis the rest of the heart will be functioning with that the advancement is a natural heart is beating whereas the heart lung machine has totally been kept outside so that the artificial pumping into the blood into the human body will be avoided when we are doing an artificial way of heart lung machine there will be some problems in the brain kidney and other places also there is a atherosclerosis of the entire body in the aorta sometimes the plates may go and land up in paralysis or maybe uh, some sort of a uh, claudication in the heart legs these things will happen so once this uh, um, beating heart system has been popularized we don't need to stop the heart and then later on um, the complications what arise due to the heart lung mission is totally disappear and also the recovery will be much faster when compared to the on a bypass patient through conventional method and the blood loss also will be less and we can able to look into the discharge much faster and the recovery is much faster later on we also got a micas that is minimal invasive cardiac surgery where previously we used to cut the entire bone in the chest wall so that the chest has to open now today we can able to do a small thoracotomy on the left side of the chest and we can able to perform while heart is beating also so that is also another advancement has come later on when we want to do in the aorta we want to do a, a by, i mean bypass vessel anastomosis we have to clamp it usually these are all the elderly people who come for bypass when we put the clamp there may be some dislodgement of atherosclerosis plates or calcium and going to the brain develops a sort of a paralysis or coma or there may be life risk with that we can able to put some punch where the anastomosis can be done automatically that is another important thing has come later on there is a robotic system has come where we can able to perform the heart surgery through robot so that where we can able to put may not be any incision at all small ports we can able to do those things like that the keep on advancements are keep coming up it will improve the quality of life recovery of the patient minimize the complications all those things are now actually performing by using all these tools all these methodologies that will able to help more and more people and sometimes in other beating heart the cost also may come down and that is a brilliant uh, synopsis of how the uh, you know ca cardio uh, thoracic surgery has advanced over the last few decades uh, but the most important thing is that you know what you mentioned that you don't have to travel overseas to get the quality treatment second is the outcomes are much better and safer today than it was earlier and which also means that the recovery is much faster which is a direct proportion to the economic growth of the uh, country because you're not staying away from work for a longer period of time uh, dr rao 
you know, when, since you are talking of technology and you're talking about, uh, you know, how it is impacting the outcomes, how is technology helping bridging this gap uh, due to the issues related to affordability and accessibility of cardiac care, specifically to rural India? Because, uh, you know, uh, while we have the most modern uh, equipment and facilities in large cities, we may not have the same thing replicated in these rural areas. Yeah, see, as I mentioned before, it requires a big teamwork. So that's why we are establishing in the, if you look into the 10, 15 years back, the heart surgery was available only in the, uh, I mean, metro cities. Today, every district headquarters, even a big, big towns, also performing the heart surgeries. That means that the, it has been reached, it has been minimized, the complexity of the teamwork into minimal thing. So that's why it's you know, affordable. The other important thing, as I mentioned before also, previously we used to go, our patients to USA, UK and other places to get it done the surgery. Today, we are getting a lot of patients from Southeast Asia, the African countries, uh, UAE to India, because the affordability is much, much uh, less expensive than compared to the Western world. So some of the people, our Indians who are staying in other countries, they can't afford, they are coming back here. So that affordability has been a very good attractive for us, for our country uh, to look into that. The accessibility is, as I mentioned, previously it was in metros. Now it has gone to the districts. Now it has gone to a city where there will be a four to five lakhs population cardiac surgery are performing. Thanks to our government of Aishman Bharat or other state government schemes which has come, it makes most of the 50% of the population who are unable to afford the heart surgery because of these schemes, they are affordable now. That's why the volume also going very uh, out number than what we expected. And apart from that, there are many people who understand the insurance. They're also taking up insurance that is also making more affordable to the population. The below poverty line, the government is doing that. Above poverty line, many of the people who have knowledge and even the good corporates has come, like that the employment, they're also doing insurance for their employees. With that affordability is there. As I mentioned, accessibility to the rural India, one is to see that it has gone to four to five lakh population and that will not be more than five to 10 kilometers away from each city in the entire rural India can able to afford. Beyond that to penetrate little lower than less than one lakh population, it will be again become an expensive tool and the, uh, the team members should go there also is a uh, tough job. So it is ultimately the affordability, apart from the accessibility, both of that, the quality is most important. So that's why we cannot able to penetrate the heart surgery into the small, smaller towns, which will able to affect the quality of uh, care. Uh, Dr. Rao, uh, you know, education, it is a very important aspect when we are trying to bridge the gap between the number of doctors that we need versus what we have. Uh, but it cannot be, uh, you know, compromised uh, on the quality as well. And one thing that is very evident from our conversation is that technology has advanced to a level where our doctors who are getting trained in these medical schools need to learn these technologies even before they pass out. Do you think our medical system or for medical education is geared up to handle that? If not, what changes do you think need to be brought so that the doctors who are getting trained today or being prepared today are getting equipped with what they will be facing in the real world when they start practice? Yeah, that's a very good question. See, basically what happened if we have centers, we need a good, if you want to provide a good quality care, we need a good entire team has to be well-trained. Today, wherever this uh, cardiothoracic surgery program is going on, they are all well-equipped. Whatever is the recent advances that are coming up, they are acquiring. 
during their education itself, they are well trained in those new technologies. The people who are there before the new technology comes, they also go back and get trained either by cadaver or by some sort of a tools. They will also well train, then only they will come back and practice. And the um, we also prepare some sort of a proctors. Whenever there is a new methodology that is coming, we will bring the vendors, bring the proctors. Initially, they train about half a dozen people in the entire world. When it is not available, we bring them from the Western world where there is performing more number of surgeries. They will come and train our existing surgeons who are already uh, doing good job and they train. That's how the any new technology that is coming by the vendors or the organizations will be able to establish and also the training institutions will also have all these equipments. Now in the recent uh, surgeons who are coming out, they are well trained in all the technology that is available as of now. I think that's a uh, well taken care. And uh, uh, Dr. Rao, where we are in the space of heart transplants in India, that's a very important aspect. So where do you think we stand today as a nation? How will the artificial hearts redefine the life after cardiac uh, problems are taken care of by the doctors? So today, heart transplant program is doing very well. The only problem, the shortcomings for this heart transplant program is we need a cadaveric donations, which most of the people are not aware of the value of cadaveric donations. But some of the states doing very well. In Telangana, we stand last two, three years. We are the number one in cadaveric donations are happening. So like that, other states are also now getting educated, the importance of the cadaveric donations, both the government and the organizations and the cadaveric organ transplant teams. There are NGOs has come forward. They are propagating the significance of this entire uh, organ donation program. So then soon we may be able to get this entire country, uh, the organ donation will come. But that will not be able to enough are sufficient to allot the organs which is required. The organs required are much more than what the cadavers are going to come in future. Because all the cadavers, we cannot be able to use it. We also need to see whether the cadaver uh, heart is well functioning. It will go and function for next 10 to 15 years for that once we transplant. So now what has happened again, the technology has come forward developed an artificial heart and there is a combined heart. There is a gap. Previously, we started about uh, LVAD, left ventricular assisted devices. With that, now any patient who are waiting for the heart transplant, when the organ is not able to procure in time and the patient requires, then there is a bridge by LVAD. Now, these LVADs have also improved so much some of the LVAD patients are there more on even four years, five years, six years also. And they also function like any other thing. They can able to swim, they can able to walk, they can able to do anything they want. This is almost like a natural life of a human being. So if the technology is advanced in such a way, these new uh, bridges for the uh, between a heart transplant and uh, that will be able to help more of the required for a transplant, those who can't get the cadavers, they will support with this. And of late, we have seen these pig hearts has been transplanting into the human. There are one done. They lived around two months. Recently, about a week days back, they have done and they are on the fifth day. They are doing very well. So now genomic transformations, human genes into the pigs, whether there is a research is going on, whether we can also use animal uh, hearts to the human bodies. If that comes, there will be, that is also one way we can able to help the requirement of the uh, recipients, uh, recipients line. Uh, Dr. Rao, what are some of the initiatives that you think the government is taking in the field of cardiac care 
both from the perspective of uh, accessibility and affordability and ensuring quality as well so government is coming up in a big way one you know that uh, entire heart diseases are coming with uh, our diet because it is the cholesterol that is able to uh, build in the bad cholesterol and good cholesterol and triglycerides and also the tension and we added to that is the diabetes and hypertension so now we are propagating how to prevent and reduce our tension our prime minister was telling about yoga which is a very important thing that can able to pacify and reduce some sort of a tension and other things and also we can also see that as i mentioned about the accessibility now lot of devices are coming to identify early stage of heart uh, diseases like your watches are able to able to find out whether your heart rate or there are now in just now today yesterday we saw the atm is coming where you can able to put your you can able to find out your cholesterol now putting lot of diagnostic center by the government where they can able to check the uh, wellness clinics to able to identify your cholesterol your diabetic level your blood pressure level so that we can able to prevent or you can able to control these things once you start controlling your heart disease can be controlled also that is one initiative is coming as far as affordability is concerned as i mentioned before this ayushman bharat and some of the state governments like our telangana we have a um, aragisri uh, schemes like that every state has its own st- scheme apart from that they also have the ayushman bharat scheme where these people below poverty line patients can able to get the free heart surgery done whether uh, uh, beating heart or whatever it may be all the wall replacements and all that's how most of the patients are affordable to go for the heart otherwise previously you could not able to have that like i will tell you an example in 2007 there was a aarogya sri scheme was been promoted here in india which i was the uh, architect of that one to implement that scheme during that time we were doing both combined andhra and telangana we were doing only 5000 heart surgeries in a year the moment the scheme has been rolled out there were 25000 heart surgeries were done in the next year that means the affordability is and also the scheme has gone as i mentioned about into the districts also previously when we mentioned these are all patients has to come to metros to get it done the heart surgery now with the scheme more number of patients are available affordability is there more centers has been opened it has gone towards the district level so that the accessibility is also very good otherwise they have to come 10 15 days to the metro city the patient the entire family to stay here language problem financial problem now all these things has been reduced by the government initiatives which has been done by the both the state governments and as well as the central government and uh, dr rao uh, the what do you think is the role of yoga for cardiology for cardiac patients so definitely uh, yoga has got some uh, relevant in all the entire health care i mean the human body health is concerned many people thinks everybody whenever we come back sir i have a tension i have a tension the tension itself will start the building up the blood pressure then the drugs then the diabetes like these are all interlinked so once you are able to do half an hour at least in a day that will able to definitely help the human body in good condition apart from that yoga will not be enough you need to also do a, a good exercise every day at least one hour you should able to spend excess for our time for our health health is by definition health is not just an options of disease it is a mental and a spiritual and a financial thing so options of just disease not the health there is again we need to look into lot of things the health is concerned so yoga will play an important role to keep your health quite i mean wealthy the other important thing apart from exercise and health i mean yoga there is one more important aspect where you want to keep your health happy healthy is the diet most of the diseases you do get 
and on diet only. So when you keep your diet and you keep your exercise, whatever calories that you were able to take, if you could able to burn on the same day, most of the diseases will be away from you. Apart from that, if you also use practice the yoga, then you will get more of free of tension and other things. When these three things are there, you do get a good sleep. Usually the sleep will be able to heal some of the damages that we do in the daytime if you have a proper sleep. So if you keep all these three, four, the healthy habits of food and exercise and yoga and uh, good sleep will keep away from diseases. So if you're able to start practicing minimum seven hours of sleep, will be able to help you reduce your tension, reduce your healthy diet, I mean, keep healthy diet so that and do a good exercise at least an hour every day will be able to help you keep away from the hospitals. And so what is your message on the World Heart Day for our audience? So the entire important thing what I'm trying to tell is today technology is improving. You can able to find out whether your heart is in good condition not only by technology, you can also daily assess yourself, try to find out any symptoms that is coming early, go back and get it checked. Prevention is better than cure. We keep on saying, first initially, what I said about the diet, the exercise, sleep, yoga, you follow and try to not to get into the diseases. If at all it comes, you have to early identify the daily activities, what you do, any mildest symptom, don't neglect it, get it checked unless it is proved. The reason why I say you want to get it checked, if you're able to identify early stages, once the heart has not got damaged, then whatever you do, whether it is medications or a surgery, and that will be able to help you to live longer, even if you do a heart surgery after that. So better identify early stages, go to the hospital and get it checked. And if there is a requirement, go far. Now today with the technology, previously when compared to the bypass surgeries, the technology is also improved in cardiology. That means previously they were not able to do any angioplasties when we started about four decades back. Today, the cardiology has superseded than the cardiac surgery. They are doing all varieties of cases and multiple complex cases unless they are not fitted to that, they are only referring to the cardiac surgery. The cardiac surgery workload has drastically come down because the cardiologist with their new inventions of the stents and the new technologies that has come forth that able to do the complex uh, uh, the lesions or the multiple uh, lesions that they can able to tackle. That's why the technology is helping not only in cardiac surgery, in cardiology, keeping all these things in view, we should not tax the patient or on the surgery or on the quality of life and quality of care. So that's why you identify early. Once you identify early, then you almost your heart will be nearer to the natural history of the uh, your life. So if you don't identify, if you have a heart attack, if you neglect it, then whatever you do afterwards, at least your natural history will be compromised for 10 to 15% of your life. Not only that, your symptoms, your sufferings, every day after the heart attack of the heart function has come down to 30% or 25%. Whatever medications you use, when he is not fit for the angioplasty, when he is not fit for the cardiac surgery, then you still live with the medications and keep suffering till you see the end of your life. Dr. Rao, I think it is such a beautiful conversation that we've had because, you know, what you really, what you really brought out is the, not just how the technology has advanced, but the impact it is creating. I mean, just listening to your last message, uh, I can say that, you know, with the remote monitoring devices that are there, you are able to predict the challenge that you might have and predictability itself leads to prevention and like you said if you have an incidence then your quality of life post 
treatment will be compromised. So predictability leads to prevention and prevention can lead you to live healthy and longer. Uh, thank you so much for your time and sharing your thoughts about how uh, cardiothoracic surgeries have evolved over the last few decades. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you. Welcome to BW Healthcare World. It's World Heart Day. And I think the discussion could not be complete without having Dr. P. Venugopal, who is the ex-head of cardiothoracic surgery and director of AIMS and the author of his recent book called Heart Felt. He introduced advanced Western concepts of cardiac surgery in the early 1970s at the time when it was largely trial and error, even in premier institutes in India. He has more than 50,000 surgeries to his credit, and he was the head of cardiothoracic center, dean and director of All India Institute for Medical Sciences, New Delhi. He performed India's first successful heart transplant surgery. Welcome Dr. Venugopal to BW Healthcare World. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Venugopal. How are you? I'm doing very good, sir. Hope you are doing well, sir. Very nice to hear. Thank you so much, sir. It is our pleasure. So first of all, thank you so much for taking out time uh, for this interview. It means a lot to us to be able to speak with you. Uh, You're welcome. Yes, sir. It is uh, a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much, sir. So my first question to you is, uh, while we have read your uh, journey in your book, Heartfelt, what as per you was the key motivating factor that kept you going and creating a deep rooted impact in the field of cardiology in India, sir? They basically, you want to develop the cardiovascular sciences to the level of what is in America. Because I stayed in America for two years and I came back. And uh, it's very easy to bring them to the travel as in America. It is a, uh, you know, a known fact that you can develop the cardiovascular sciences to that level so that people can get the benefit of the modern technology. Right, sir. And uh, it is very easy to bring them to that level rather than going to the America for treatment or anything of that nature. Right. So that kept you motivated to bring that level of treatment yes. to India. Uh, fantastic, sir. Sir, if we talk the, about basically. Yes, Basically, it is very Indians are the well trained and well equipped, and technology wise, it is up to the mark. So, it is very easy to bring them to that level to get the best of everything. Right, sir. Sir, if we talk about heart transplants, how has India developed itself? as a success in demonstrating high quality at affordable price, sir. Basically, you have to understand Indians are capable of coming to the world level because it is we brought them to that level. So all that it requires is motivation, and uh, involvement and uh, both of the factors are uh, there and people who can have the treatment of uh, uh, valve, conventional treatment like a uh, valve replacement or anything of that nature for which people go abroad. However, heart transplant is a, is a morality which cannot be purchased. Even in America, Western countries, 
which will do the artery plantation. It is only for their own people, not for uh, for us. So basically, you have to develop the program for your to suit your conditions for your own people for the purpose of uh, availability. If you want to go abroad for a bar transplantation, it is not possible because there is a shortage of donors in the in every country, and especially for um, it is uh, more or less only reserved for their own people because there is a shortage of the alcohol. Right, sir. And sir, in your experience. Or as a transplant surgeon, what reluctancies and stereotypes have you seen, both from the donor and receiver side? And how do you, as a medical practitioner, see what needs to be done to create this sensitivity towards transplants and donations? Is the basic thing is you have to train your. It's a teamwork. So people who are involved with the transplantation program are part and parcel of the team. The one has to be acclimatized and uh, in totally involved in the program so that you you can do the service better way. You have to. Um, be ready to have a donor and the recipient. And the recipient is the one who is going to get the heart and it is going to be the availability. Sir, when we read your book, you spoke about your mentors who redefined the way you dealt with situations. And then the roles have reversed now where you are a mentor to many other doctors. How do you think that the younger healthcare professionals should take forward your legacy? I think it's already been practiced by the cardiac surgeons. And uh, if you see it's involvement, motivation, and um, total dedication to the profession. And people are coming, have done it. And previously, it's like a, when the people used to go for cardiac surgery, people used to think that is the end of it. Now, it is the beginning of the hope. The, when the hope is there, then everybody is uh, this one. Because previously cardiac, when going to the cardiac surgery, people think that is the head because cardiac surgery is offered for the air stretch cardiac disease. And there is nothing else left other than the cardiac surgery. So that is the end of it. But right. now there is a hope that after the cardiac surgery, everything is going to be all right. And that, with that hope, people are coming forward and demanding cardiac surgery rather than ready to provide the facilities to the cardiac surgery. That's a very beautiful change, sir. Uh, that is a very beautiful change that has happened, sir. And yes. sir, uh, in your journey, you know, I'm sure there have been times when you were co you were coping up with negativity and criticism from other people. When there were such times where you felt this criticism from other people, what is it that you did? And second is, what is your learning from this that you would want to share with the young surgeons of today, sir? See, basically, cardiac surgery is there, but the Young surgeons are they provide the facilities for the cardiac surgery, and cardiac surgery is successful and 
once the surgery is done the patient is no longer sick can come come back to normalcy and uh, become a useful member of the society and that is the more important thing because coming back to normalcy and useful to society is the most important thing in the life sir i am asking you uh, when you did the first heart transplant surgery in india what motivated you to take that step can you tell us a little bit about what prompted and how it happened sir see one has to be very clear that you as the the transplant there is no this one because the conventional medical or surgical therapy is not a going to benefit the patient so when there is a only uh, no alternative other than the transplantation you one has to come for the forward for the transplantation and uh, that is the only hope hope and that hope once the heart is transplanted can lead a normal life and there are persons who are living now after transplantation for more than a year one year and more pay, pay and leading an absolutely normal life right sir uh dr venu gopal uh, you have been the driver of what aims is known for today how has it helped in breaking the stigma that existed about quality of in healthcare in government setups when compared to the private setups we basically government setup and the private setup if you compare private setup as all the doctors and other personnel are trained from the government setup so it is a question of availability of resources in terms of it's man not manpower alone it is the availability of the other medical facilities and that is a more available in the private sector because of the buildings and other thing of that nature otherwise private setup is a manned by the people who are trained by the in the in the, in the government setup so they are actually running the private setup only question is who is in the private setup the private practice doctors are given my incentive like a money and other thing of that nature whereas the government is not uh, able to provide that much of a remuneration as in the private setup and doc dr venu gopal what do you think is the role of the government policies in creating accessible and affordable medical technologies that is to be the aim of the government as well as with the private the private sector because not only it is the access available to access to the medical facility it is the availability of the technology and the technology is available all over it is a question of accessibility of all the available resources and that should be available to all the people and in the whether it is the government setup or the private setup and uh, dr venu gopal on the world heart day this year what would be your message to everyone the people should utilize the with facilities and lead a normal life because there is no use suffering 
evolve this the technology is available in india people go abroad for treatment just because of the accessibility is availability is not universal but the same facilities can be utilized by the doctors who are trained abroad and working in india there is no difference between the accessibility and availability of the medical technology dr venu gopal i can only say thank you and gratitude to you uh, not just for joining us on this show and writing your book heartfelt which is something which i think everybody should read but also for the contribution that you have made to india and the cardiac uh, you know the development in the cardiac space in this country so thank you so much 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 gratitude to you sir thank you thank you sir welcome to bw healthcare world thank you so much for taking out time to be with us on thursday thought leaders uh dr shetty you know i want to really ask you questions related to healthcare and specifically cardiology yeah. uh to begin with how do you see technology advancements uh like robotic surgeries when it comes to surgery uh ai and blockchain when it comes to determining the uh understanding the disease better uh and diagnosing it towards personalized care and that's what we are aiming at what do you think where are we heading and what is your opinion on technology and the role it is playing in today's world the tools doctors have today and the impact of that on patients recovery following any major illness is nothing short of magical right what used to take us maybe 10 hours of heart surgery today cardiologists take the patient to the cath lab and in 15 minutes they finish the procedure uh -huh. and next day patient walks out of the hospital right 30 years ago what was considered inoperable mm -hmm. nothing can be done today those patients undergo heart operation they get better 5 days 10 days they go home right so what healthcare has reached now is simply astonishing that has happened predominantly because of a great interaction between the man and the machine mm -hmm. and also exposure of to large number of patients with complex problems mm -hmm. we are all technicians as we keep doing it we get better and a uh, lot of innovations have happened in other areas with a huge impact on our industry Mm -hmm. and more than anything else early diagnosis which right. has happened dramatically when i i left england in 1989 mm -hmm. at that time in the whole country i don't think there were more than few hundred ultra echo machines mm -hmm. to diagnose a heart problem right today every nook and corner has echo cardiography facilities mm -hmm. where uh, young doctors make fantastic diagnosis at a very early stage right and patients have the knowledge to undergo the procedure because when i started my career mm -hmm. if you tell a patient that uh, you know you need an operation uh, it used to take me a long time to convince them right and today if i tell the patient you need a heart operation in 2 minutes everything is done they leave the office if i tell them you don't need the operation i have to explain to them for at least one hour <laughs> why they don't need the operation yeah everything has changed yeah. right so the trust on the technology has yes, uh, immensely increased, immensely changed, yes. right and uh, dr shetty what in your opinion is the future of devices and therapeutics specifically specifically for cardiovascular in india see the the implants various devices will have a massive impact on the lifestyle longevity uh, and uh, the entire recovery process of the patients mm -hmm. uh, in simple terms hospital will undergo dramatic change mm -hmm. 
Today, if you say 100 bed hospital, about 70, 80 beds are ward and room beds, 10%, 20% are ICU beds. Right. In the next five to seven years time, 80, 90% of the beds will be ICU beds. Mm -hmm. And the ward and room beds, what we were using earlier, that activity will be done at home, where patients will be monitored mm -hmm. uh, remotely by the doctors. So right. patient doesn't need to sleep on the hospital bed. Right. They can sleep uh, at home. So the in amazing things are going to change. Like in a heart hospital, one of the biggest problems is a sudden cardiac arrest mm -hmm. happening uh, in the hospital right. when the patient is in the ward. Mm -hmm. In the next one year's time, one year, one and a half years, cardiac arrest in the ward will be completely eliminated. Now, you see a typical pattern, a nurse comes in the morning, takes a BP operator, goes to every bed, spends 15 minutes and right. check the blood pressure, temperature, then she enters. Yes. It's all going to be history. Mm -hmm. Patients will have a small patch, which will keep continuously giving the ECG with the analytics. Mm -hmm. Automatically, blood pressure will be recorded, oxygen saturation, respiratory rate, restlessness, temperature, everything will be... Uh, recorded real time right. 24 hours and a, a risk score will appear right. based on the patient's condition. Nurses station will have a big TV with the patient's room number and the name with three color flags, orange, green and red. The, the, uh, the, uh, whenever, if as long as green, nobody will bother going near the patient. Mm -hmm. Only when it changes the color, they will go and uh, this. That's amazing because uh, it's going to uh, save a lot of lives because huge. you'll know the problem before it occurs. Exactly. Then See the, when you say cardiac arrest in the hospital, six hours to ten hours before the cardiac arrest, many changes happen in the patient's condition. Right. Heart rate starts going up, temperature starts going down, patient gets a bit restless, oxygen level goes down. Right. Human eyes can't detect this. Correct. Whereas the sensors, they don't get tired. Right. And they can analyze all the minute details. And based on the analytics, the risk score will make a huge change. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, Dr. Devishetty, do you think there is a need to relook at the public health policy as well? When it comes to, you know, I believe there are three pillars on which healthcare works. One is the accessibility. Second is the quality. And third is the affordability. Do you think something needs to happen in the public health domain so that you can impact the three and uh, have healthier citizens in our country? See, the, the biggest problem in our country is the affordability. Right. If the affordability is addressed, accessibility, availability, everything will happen. Right. Hospital will come up. Yes. Today, why hundreds of hospitals are not coming up? Mm -hmm. Mainly because people don't have the money to pay for the healthcare. Right. But that is going to change. India will become the first country in the world to dissociate healthcare from affluence. India will prove to the world that the wealth of the nation or wealth of the family has nothing to do with the quality of healthcare its mm -hmm. citizens will enjoy. Right. And India will do it in five years. How will it happen, sir? Yeah, it will, I tell you. How it will happen is, in India, everyone is going to have a health insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, you are aware, a lot of major changes have happened in IRDA. Yes. The IRDA is now managed by people who are very passionate about universal health care for everyone Correct. through health insurance. Correct. So they are very clear that current health insurance model is not delivering. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at in healthcare today in India, there are three stakeholders. Mm -hmm. There is hospital, yeah. there is uh, insurance company, and there is patient. Yes. These are the three stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Hospitals do not trust the health insurance company. Mm -hmm. Health insurance company doesn't trust the hospital. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and the patient doesn't trust both parties <laughs> so yes. in a industry if there are three stakeholders and none of them trust each other that business cannot sustain absolutely now that is going to change when the hospitals become health insurance provider right the whole equation will change absolutely like today when i tell a patient do you need a bypass grafting uh-huh. first thing comes to the patient's mind is is it really required right because i have a conflict of interest yes whereas when i am a health insurance company running the hospital hospital is not running the yes. insurance company yes. i tell the patient you need a bypass grafting uh uh-huh. there is no conflict absolutely because i am going to pay for it mm-hmm. then my interest and the patient interest is aligned absolutely so w- the transition will happen when the hospital become health insurance company mm-hmm. like we have a desire to become a health insurance company mm-hmm. we will work hard to make sure that our subscribers our members don't fall sick correct so we will ensure that we en- invest heavily on primary care early detection because if we do that they don't fall sick they don't end up in the hospital absolutely then their interest and my interest is aligned aligned so that is what will happen i'm so glad that this is taking shape because uh, i have always believed that insurance companies should be the heaviest investors in preventive healthcare yes. absolutely and uh, <clears throat> dr shetty i want to ask you and i've been looking to ask you this question for a very long time around the medical education it is not just the gap between the demand and supply of doctors there is seems or there seems to me at least a gap between what is being taught to the doctors in the host- in the medical schools versus what they are practicing today the changes in terms of technology the skill set required beyond just the health uh, the medical or surgery do you think the medical education system needs to undergo a change and if so what kind of changes Uh, should be made to ensure quality is not compromised just because of quantity what medical education uh, uh, should do we have done it in nursing education mm-hmm. in our hospital we run nursing colleges right and our nurses they spend 6 months in the nursing college understand the basics of it then huge amount of their time they spend in the icu okay initially as the assistant to the nurses mm-hmm. and in when our nurses finish their bsc in nursing in mm-hmm. four years they are like a nurse who is coming out with three years of experience in managing a critically ill patient in the icu right yeah and these girls uh, we have a hospital in cayman island uh-huh. the day they graduate they get a appointment letter and they go to uh, cayman island and their starting salary is more nearly 2 lakh rupees wow yes so the essentially that is what needs to be done in medical education but unfortunately what has happened the curriculum and the way uh, medical students are taught is like teaching people to swim in a classroom if you want you teach them for 10 years in a classroom how to swim when they get into water they will drown yes so medical education should change and that should happen near the bedside mm. and that that is happening now it's a matter of time before right. every, these changes will happen yes right. dr shetty you spoke about the trust and there is a deficit of trust in the healthcare system today how can the healthcare system work today towards building the depleting faith and trust that the patients have in their healthcare providers as long as there is a money transaction between the hospital and the patient right you cannot build the trust right it's not possible because every time the patient lands in trouble the bill goes up mm-hmm. then there is a suspicion that to extract money hospitals are doing all those dramas right so I have a dream my dream is that when a doctor talks to the patient the discussion is about the treatment 
and it's not about money. Today, it is very, very humiliating for us doctors to talk more about the money mm -hmm. than the treatment. Today, when I tell a patient that you need a bypass, they don't talk about the risk, quality of life, lifestyle. No, they only talk about the money. Because that's a reality. So my dream is that everyone should have a health insurance mm -hmm. and once a year they make the payment mm -hmm. and rest of the time there is no financial transaction. Mm -hmm. And my dream is that hospitals should not have a cash counter. Beautiful. Yeah. And that will happen. Beautiful. Dr. Shetty, brand, any brand defines the culture of the institution and also the ethos of the founders and the leadership. And what is it that Narayana Health uh, aims to stand for with its redefined branding? See, the, we want to be partners of people in their wellness. Mm -hmm. We do not call ourselves as a group which manages the hospital. Mm -hmm. Hospital is just uh, one tiny part of what we want to do. Right. We want to be with the patient wherever they are, whatever time they need us, whether it's two o'clock at night at home or whether they are traveling and having some health issue. We want to be there. Mm -hmm. And we have created vehicles today in our digital journey uh, tools for them to be in touch with us 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, The healthcare will undergo dramatic transformation when a digital platform is developed and it is utilized by the doctors, nurses, technicians, administrators and the patient and the machines which are seamlessly connected, constantly exchanging data then you will have the ideal healthcare. It doesn't make any differentiation between whether the patient is in front of me here or he is at home. Mm -hmm. And that is the platform we have developed. It took us 20 years to reach there. Mm -hmm. And we believe it will be a game changer. Right. And I can tell you that the world's largest healthcare provider will have no beds. It is going to be a software. And that is our desire to develop that software. And your brand, the redefined brand, will depict this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Shetty, uh, are there any challenges as a hospital, uh, a person who is leading the hospital? There's a lot of responsibility in running the hospital that you feel need to be addressed by the government. Are there? Is there any ask from the government? See, the uh, we are grateful to the government for redefining the role of IRDA because in India in Indian healthcare there is only one problem mm -hmm. that is the money right the moment people have enough money to pay through the insurance or whatever they have automatically hospital will spring up everywhere doctors will get trained all the doctors who have gone abroad they all will come back yes right amazing transformation will happen and I believe it will happen in five years. Absolutely. Uh, we look forward to that. And Dr. Devishetty, as a parting remark, we are heading for a World Heart Day. So what would be your message to the medical fraternity and to the patients for the World Heart Day? I have a simple message. Uh, my message is how fit you feel has nothing to do with how fit you are. To take care of your heart, please go for a preventive checkup, irrespective of what age. Right. Yes. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Thank Dr. Javi Shetty. It was lovely, lovely Thank speaking you. with Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome to BW Healthcare World on the World Heart Day. My next guest is Dr. Purshottam Lal, who's an interventional cardiologist who dedicated himself to the service of humanity, especially the poor and the needy. He has been conferred with Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, and Dr. B.C. Roy National Award, and is known as the father of interventional cardiology. Dr. Lal has a unique distinction of introducing largest number of procedures in the field of interventional cardiology to our country, some of which are 
slow rotational angioplasty, coronary atherectomy, diamond drilling of arteries, which is also known as rotebletter, non-surgical closure of heart hole, non-surgical aortic valve replacement, etc. Dr. Lan has developed new techniques of aortofemoral bypass support, which is also known as the partial artificial heart, and opening of the tight heart walls with eco without cat lap. We performed the first case of non-surgical heart hole closure, which is also known as AST, and monodesk device and aortic valve replacement and core wall for the first time in the world. His name has been listed many times in the Limca Book of World Records, and he's currently serving as a chairman of Metro Group of Hospitals. Welcome, Dr. Purushottam Lal, to BW Healthcare World. Uh, you know, we really appreciate, despite not being uh, really well, you took time to speak with us today. Uh, my first question to you is, sir, uh, when did you actually start your practice? For how long have you been into interventional cardiology? Well, uh, uh, if I go year by then I say about 35 years back in 88. So since then I'm in the field of international cardiology. And sir, uh, with, with so many years, 38 years of practice, what has changed in the field of interventional cardiology from the time you got into this field to now what we see? Well, first of all, I would like to tell what is the interventional cardiology. And uh, it's a branch of cardiology where we intervene the heart, intervene the heart with plastic tubes called as catheters with a goal to treat the heart problems without surgery. So that is the field called interventional cardiology. And it, in 88, it was just started, you know, about those years in 80s. First uh, balloon angioplasty was done in 1977 by a great person from Switzerland, Dr. Grunsek. And he did the first uh, put the balloon into the artery. And that is how this whole thing started as far as the coronary artery is concerned. So when I, when I listened to your story, it was very inspiring because, uh, you know, you took the courage to do certain things which had never been done before in our country. So it requires a lot of courage to break through the standard procedures and go and convince people to take that risk and allow you to do something which could be in the best interest for their lives. Now, how are you able to convince these people and motivate them to allow you to do something which would be the first time that you would be doing it, experimenting? Very good question, Narula Sahab. It is the other way around that I used to do a lot of new procedures and the word, as I said before, spreads. And I'll give you a small story. There was a lady, mother of a college student and the name of that boy, Suresh Babu, 19 year old, Loyola College, Chennai man. Now, he had a hole in the heart called as ASD. So whenever I will come to Chennai, some of the other, that boy's mother will find out her ways and she will come to me. Now, I, I didn't know the Tamil and the secretaries they have. 
and she used to give me one message that i want surgery done i want my son's all closed without surgery from you only and every time i'll come to reach there so it is a stimulation the confidence of the patient knowing very well that nobody had done this before and she wanted to get this thing done on her son and finally i did in 92 his son's heart closure without surgery no credit goes to her even though i was involved in the animal studies development of this device mm-hmm. and uh, it happened to be not first time in india with that particular mono disc device was first time in the world so the but whenever i do any new procedure it was just like i am doing on my own heart mm-hmm. you know you have to adopt and there should be enough studies enough data and that is how we started the first hole right and otherwise also it was first hole a uh, first asd of the country and then we started doing many holes you know and uh, i always remember that lady that if she would not have pushed me you know and maybe i would have taken a couple of more years or something like that it's the confidence of the patient i'll tell you one more story yes i will not tell many stories i may be have 30 stories but certain a patient came from calcutta mr ahmed his name bank clerk accompanied by one of his colleague came to get his valve open without surgery but having 5000 rupees in his pocket it was not possible there entering a cath lab itself was costing 50000 so again it is the confidence and i took that patient to my residence where i was staying kept him overnight gave some medicine and 4 o'clock in the morning rather 3:30 4 o'clock we reached the hospital we opened the cath lab oh, not cath lab sorry echo and with the help of echo echocardiography i opened his valve so there was no use of cath lab then i standardized that procedure for young girls uh, not to expose them to the radiations but the story here is then the question comes why how, how come you are doing first time and uh, open the well but somebody has to do it you know and that was all the procedures it was not only this procedure the opening of the well with a balloon you know i started in 90 and i remember the inventor of that balloon dr inu i went to him to japan he met me in germany and uh, that time he did not want to give this balloon for india he said no the problem is very much common and you reuse so many times you know and uh, but then i convinced him and that balloon was costing 3000 us dollars you know but i persuaded him for india to give in 1000 so 
till today 81000 and sarova sahab it it remains the best balloon of the world even after 33 years one thing uh, you know that i understand there's a patient who comes in and there's a need and they inspire you to uh, do something for them but not everybody has the courage to take that risk now what do you think and i'm sure in your career you must have mentored and trained a lot of uh, cardiologists what is that trait what is the mindset of someone who is going to be an innovator going to be an experimenter that can lead to innovation to be able to do a lot of things which have never been done before wo kya ek cheez hai jo aapko lagta hai is insaan mein hai this cardiologist will be able to do it narula sahab ye bhi ek nasha hunda and when you do the case first you have to see that if you will do that case that time i was much younger and i do on my brother mm-hmm. and now also even things on my son right you have to adopt and when if i will see that there is a risk involved i will never ever do mm-hmm. that is for the first time yes. there are multiple data multiple ways you know we do because like i opened the valve with echo mm-hmm. i knew that i just cannot go wrong mm-hmm. now what made me to do that it has never been done in the medical literature but i want to have that poor person and it is his confidence in me it made me to thought of course putting everything together i will give the credit to the balloon because that he knew made beautiful balloon right you know and that is why we have been able to do so i think this was the uh, situation with all the procedures in the field of intervention cardiology where you have to do lot of research you know and you have to any many of those things are already done you know in other countries and we wanted to do that in india and even take in india uh intervention cardiology we made a lot of progress and uh, it is the that kind of encouragement because you have limited time and where if i will start going on each procedure but now one procedure i will tell that is the i said in the beginning aortic valve replacement 92 when i presented so it was always in my mind so one day we will do that so then there is a inventor out in france he invented that poor valve and then you must be hearing now the stevi has become very popular you know and then terry with core valve he walked down it and this seat par main baitha hu isi chair mein maine baith kar i spoke about that valve and we did the first case of the world stevi with core valve here in noida on july 12 2004 i was hoping 
and that was our commitment that each well will not cost more than three lakh. But then, you know, all the Western people, and then they are, are told that twice to another company put that price eight lakh. But you know, in our country, there are rich hospitals. And we made a lot of noise that we should get together and should not let well so expensive. Mm -hmm. But you are in a corporate world, this world, and you know how the business goes. Yes. Now more and more companies will be doing it. It has become very popular and we published first paper, 011, like that. <laughs> so, we have covered wells, we have covered holes, and we have covered the heart attack, tenting, and then you go to the interventional cardiology. Correct, correct. Sir, uh, you know, uh, you spoke about a patient who came to you and the patient did not have enough money. He had only 5,000 rupees in his pocket. Now, we are living in a country which is very unique. We are talking of the dichotomy of having the most modern healthcare practices, hospitals, equipment in the metropolitan cities. And then we also have rural areas where there is no access to healthcare. How can we bring, and, and, and we know that we are a country which is a diabetic capital, uh, heart attacks are common. How can we bring a, a good cardiac care to our rural part of the country? Well, uh, it's a very good question. And I belong to a village where I did my high school education. I know more about the villages than any average person might be knowing. And that was the time when there was no electricity there, but among, above all, no doctors. And you know, doctors don't go to the villages. Government has tried all sorts of methods. Yes. I, one of the reasons of my coming back was the rural health care. I lost my father very young age. And then always it was bugging me. So I developed a formula, three point formula, where super specialists will also like to go to villages. But any new thing in a country like us, not that easy right. to introduce. So, I have special attachment for the villages. So we started the concept of having advanced heart care in the smaller places. So that by the time patient travel to the big city, he should not be dying with the heart attack. Started first heart center of Haryana in Fitzgerald. First heart center in Herod. So many small places, everybody and all. The whole idea was this. And now 
no there you you know slowly slowly you know this medical thing has become you know a big uh, for me to say in more and more hospital to come but then upar wala kuch na kuch kar deta hai abhi ye jo आयुष्मान भारत सब तो यू नहीं रही इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट तो सिमिलरली मोर एंड मोर पीपल आर वर्किंग सरप्राइजिंगली द अवेयरनेस नामना ऑफ awareness i remember in 98 for prevention point of view and otherwise you must have heard the word ct coronary angio and when it came i thought that my patient i deal with generally low middle class and my patient will not be able to afford first it can you and then regular and you and i am talking about the time when the angiography was considered a big procedure big phobia among people and whenever anybody will come to get the angiography done four five relatives here and there they will also accompany just like it's a big surgery and then we brought a concept that the people were afraid of word angiography so we started a concept under the name metro coronary screening and metro coronary screening and then we also the why they catheter 1.2 mm that you do the angiography no need of taking of the close because it's a non infectious procedure general sterile conditions and the person can go back to home after angiography within one hour we have done more than 60000 cases first paper we presented in uh and now almost all the hospitals are doing so this is the case where we were able to detect the disease in early stage so it was an interventional cardiology from preventive point Don't talk only, uh, you know. So this this was the method. If there is an early coronary artery disease, it is very easy to convince that patient that you do the yoga, you do this, you do that, and if you give the lecture, otherwise, then the people who self care is much less. So. rural still needs more care than it is being done but situation is much better sir um uh, i want to ask you one question which is been there in my mind for a very very long time and i wanted to ask specifically to somebody who's a seasoned experienced interventional cardiologist and uh, so today i get this opportunity and that is around the ethics of doctors and what needs to happen to bring back the trust in the healthcare system because uh sir ek patient hai uske chest mein dard hota hai usko uski family hospital le jati hai angiography hoti hai the doctor comes out and says that you know we should put in a stent where is a report say that you know it is not completely blocked sometimes uh there is the ethic of a doctor which is questionable but 
because of this doubt sometimes there is a disservice that the family does to the patient because wo trust nahi karte hain aur lekin doctor ko pata hai ki abhi kuch nahi hai lekin 3 mahine 6 mahine mein problem aayegi lekin kyunki family trust nahi karti hai to wo patient kharab ho jata hai over a period of time how can we bridge this gap of faith in the doctor that existed few decades ago i think when you started your practice you would have seen it doctors were treated like gods and today people question doctors hame healthcare industry mein aisa kya karna hai jisse trust wapas aaye roza sahab aap bahut badhiya sawal poochte hain and uh, really uh, when i came back to india the issue was the trust when i left india went to america to pay doctor ko bhagwan ka when i came back this was an era where hospital ke shishe doot rahe hain बहुत बड़ी बड़ी प्रॉब्लम्स है एंड कमिंग टू दैट पॉइंट दैट इज अ क्रिटिकल ब्लॉक एंड इफ यू डोंट डू देन इट इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ बिग हार्ट अटैक बट द पेशेंट एज इन ट्रस्ट वेरी प्रैक्टिकल सिचुएशन एन वर्क इन मीडियम काइंड ऑफ प्लेसेस मुझे एक कुली कहता कहता जी जहां तो नाम बनाना पड़ा मैंने यार आप पूरी स्टडी करके आए हैं नाम कैसे बनाएंगे ये तो एक्सरसाइज कहते देन ओनली द ट्रस्ट बट आई थिंक दी अदर वे अराउंड आई फील दैट इफ यू फीली अडॉप्ट पेशेंट जो मैंने शुरू में ही बोला यू अडॉप्ट पेशेंट एज यूर रिलेटिव पेशेंट आर वेरी इनोसेंट एंड दे कैन मेक इट आउट यू नो नॉ इफ आई विल टेल माई पेशेंट आई एम टेलिंग यू प्रैक्टिकल थिंग दैट यू विल रिक्वायर टू स्टेंट्स and i ended up putting the three stents and those were the days when the stent good stent very expensive also but it was a many i never told the patient that i have put the third stent also why i didn't have because then they will see it's a business no because the so i will write in the case summary but never will tell the patient <clears throat> the the and we in our hospital people then find out that there is nothing such kind thing can happen with dr lal i'm not a self praising there are many that loves like me and but you have to create a which will not be created that you will give the lecture and all that it takes you of time no my patients are if i tell them sit they sit if i tell them stand they stand I have been member board of Governor Medical Council of India. I have been Delhi Medical Council member ethical committee also, and I always tell people that the patients are innocent. Always exceptions are there, but generally 
but there is a lack of communication. Doctor will adopt the patient. Doctor will be fair with the patient. You know, and then they will not say anything. You know, it is the commercialization and lack of communication. You have to make the things very clear. You are not supposed to give the surprises. The patient should know. Mm -hmm. Our principle is, of course, different. We don't return any patient for ward or money. Yeah. Initially, we were we used to make this statement very quietly. Mm -hmm. And we are a private institution. Uprawala Dr. Rubnata hai or doctor in noble profession. Okay. And if you save the life of the patient, you don't save. It's the Y Guru who saves. We are the instrument. Okay. But at the end of the day, you feel very good. So I think it's the principles. And the principles boil down to, again, I'm using that word adoption again and again. Patient ko aap ghar ka maan ka jau ge. Prabhu, kuti ni. Bilko. Nii, aapne bhoat badi baat ke, Dr. Lal ke, aap zariya ho. Upar wala kara raha hai, aap ke through kara raha hai, aap ke skills ke through kara raha hai. So I think that's why, and adopting the patient and considering them as somebody close to you, to aap galat kari nii sakte. I think that's a very powerful thought. So before I let you go, my last request to you is, we talk a lot about World Heart Day, pe, bolte hai, doctor ko, can you give a message for the audience? So today I'm going to ask you, is there a message that you would want to give to the young international cardiologists on the World Heart Day? Young cardiologists? Yes, sir. Well, I... As far as the cardiologist goes, the young cardiologist, I, I will always say that a patient comes with great hope, with great trust, and a doctor should leave up to their expectations the best possible way. And if we talk about the little message to the young people, then I would say that if you follow some exercise program and uh, that includes everything, yoga, walk, and then you maintain the weight and if the problems don't come. And if somebody got bad habits like smoking, smoking is poison for the heart, not smoke. And if there is a diabetes, high blood pressure, those should be controlled. A lot of the problems can be. I don't tell my patients, hey, don't eat this, don't eat that. I just feel the okay, alum has to maintain good weight like you, you know, and uh, then over. Great, sir. Yes, sir, it is lovely speaking with you today. I know you are a little under the weather, you are coughing, but you still took time and made efforts to uh, have this conversation. You know, and it was a very inspiring conversation. I mean, I speak to doctors and uh, uh, people in the healthcare regularly, but sometimes there's a lot of uh, takeaways. And, you know, one was that uh, I understood that when you understand the limitation or the challenges, you can either succumb to that pressure or be inspired to find a solution and that is when you can innovate. 
and i think that is one ability which has led you to do a lot of firsts in our country and also a first in the world the second very big takeaway was that you know uh when you have the conviction in what you can do and you have the faith in the ability in your own ability and like you just said that you know a janoon to be able to help that is when you can win the patient's confidence and that will give you the confidence to do all these things so that was a very beautiful uh, thing that i took away from this particular conversation for tisri ji i think you know the bigger biggest learning for i think for all doctors is your message that uh, patient ko adopt karo as a family member to aap uske sath theek hi karoge so and uh, that i think you know were the very good messages that i took away from this conversation